One of the best ways to increase productivity in a software project is to automate anything manual or repetitive. And you might be surprised at how easy automation is to implement when you use an awesome tool like GitHub Actions. In today's video, we'll look at five different techniques that can improve the quality of your code and make your life more productive through the magic of DevOps. If you have no idea what terms like continuous integration and delivery mean, you will by the end of this video. And if you choose to follow along with your own project, we will automate the hell out of it. If you're new here, like and subscribe and grab the full write-up from Fireship.io. Before we get started, I'd like to take a second to say thank you because the channel just surpassed 300,000 subscribers. To celebrate that, I have a big giveaway plan in the next 100 seconds of code video that everybody can participate in. Stay tuned for that in a couple days pending the apocalypse. We're all gonna die! Now to get started with today's video, the only thing you really need is a GitHub repository. And the service has a very generous free tier, so don't worry about paying for anything up front. Now before we jump into these five different DevOps recipes, let's answer the question of what is GitHub Actions? Consider a repo on GitHub. There are all kinds of different events that can happen to that repo. Someone might start the repo, send a pull request, or you might merge code into the master branch. These are examples of events, and any event can trigger an automated workflow. A workflow can spin up one or more containers for you in the cloud. Then you provide a set of steps or instructions for the container to do something useful for you. GitHub will log the progress of each step and make it very clear if something failed. Now, the really cool thing about Actions is that instead of writing your own steps from scratch, you can use ones implemented by the community. You can think of each step as a reusable chunk of code, which we call an action. On GitHub, you'll find hundreds of reusable actions that solve common problems, with each one being its own Git repo that you can fork and customize as needed. But I think the best way to get started is to look at some real world examples. A good starting place is continuous integration. And if you have no idea what that term means, make sure to check out my 100 seconds of code video on that topic. The whole idea behind continuous integration, or CI, is to have developers submit their code to the main code base in small maintainable chunks, usually on a daily basis, and those changes should be automatically tested against the main code base. Let's take a quick tour of the code. Inside the package JSON, you can see I have a set of scripts here. We use Jest to run automated tests, and then build to build the app with Webpack. The app itself is just a simple website that tells you what day of the week it is. Inside the source directory, we have app.js with a JavaScript function that implements that logic. And then we have app.test.js to test that logic. Feel free to clone this repo if you want to use it as an example, or better yet, use your own project as a starting point because these principles apply to any GitHub repo. When you visit your code on GitHub, you'll notice this actions tab. This is where you can monitor your workflows. When a workflow is triggered, it will give you a log of everything that happened on the server. What we want to do for continuous integration is have our test suite run anytime there's a pull request to the master branch. If the test suite fails or if the code fails to build, we should get a red check mark here, automatically telling us not to merge that pull request. But if everything goes according to plan, we should get a green check mark. Now back in the source code, you can see I have a GitHub directory followed by workflows and a file called integrate.yaml. Anything in this workflows directory will be picked up by GitHub and automatically set up as a workflow in the cloud. The YAML file is where we define the workflow. We'll give it a name of node continuous integration. Then we need to tell it on which event or events to run. We do that with the on object. And in this case, we want to run it on pull request to the master branch. Now every workflow should have one or more jobs. You define them on this jobs object and then first give the job a name. We'll call this one test pull request. From there, we need to tell the job which VM to run on. I'll run this one on Ubuntu, but you also have the choice of Windows and Mac OS. Next, we need to give this job a set of steps or instructions that actually build and test our code. We'll first want to get our source code into the virtual machine. We can do that using an officially maintained action called checkout. That brings your source code into the current working directory. And that means you can run commands like you would from the command line if working on the project locally. But in our case, we also need to set up Node.js in order to run those commands. So we use the node setup action and then specify the version. And from there, we're ready to start running our own commands. We first need to install all of our dependencies from NPM, and we can do that using the CI command. That's equivalent to NPM install, but it does a clean install for your CI server. From there, we'll run our test command to test our code. And then after that, we'll run our build command to make sure the build compiles properly. Now it's also worth noting that if you have a more complex test suite, like end-to-end -end tests with Cypress, for example, there's very likely an existing action to set up the test runner for you automatically in the environment. And that's all it takes for the workflow configuration. To start using it, we just need to commit it to the master branch. I'll run git add, git commit, and then git push to push that to the remote repository. Now, if you go to the actions tab on GitHub, you'll notice that it's still empty. That's because we haven't had an actual pull request event to trigger a workflow. So let's go ahead and give our workflow a spin by creating a pull request. 
I'll go ahead and create a new branch using git checkout with the B flag to automatically move into it. Inside that branch, I'll make some changes to the source code that caused the test to fail. I'll then commit those changes and then push this branch to the remote repo. When I go back to GitHub, I'll see the option to create a pull request, which I'll go ahead and do. And you'll notice that it indicates how we're running checks or continuous integration tests in the background. If we go to the Actions tab, we can see logging for this process running in real time. In this case, the tests on the pull request fail, which means we probably shouldn't integrate this code into the main code base. And as the developer who submitted this code, I can look at the logs and realize what I did wrong. In this case, since I have an open pull request, I can go back into my code and fix it, and then push another commit to this branch. GitHub will automatically rerun the workflow because this is an open pull request. And this time around, we get green check marks. So that takes care of our continuous integration. Now it's time to move on to the next phase, continuous deployment. At this point, we're confident we have a valid pull request, and when we merge that code into the master branch, we also want to deploy the app to our customers. So continuous integration is about merging new code into the code base, while continuous deployment is about pushing that code out to your customers. To demonstrate this, I'm going to integrate a third-party host, Firebase. And I'd like to give a shout out to Mark Stammer Johan. He put together an awesome guide that will take you through each one of these steps, so make sure to check that out on Fireship.io. We can easily set up hosting locally by running Firebase init hosting. Then we can push our code to our Firebase hosting account using Firebase Deploy. We can do all this locally because we're authenticated into our Firebase account on our local system. But how do we authenticate a remote CI server to do the same thing? What we'll need to do is share a secret token with GitHub. We can obtain that token from Firebase by running Firebase Login CI. This will return us with a token string, which you can think of as an API key or username password combination. Make sure to keep this value secret. Go ahead and copy the value from the command line and then head over to your GitHub repo, go to settings, then secrets, and add a new secret. We'll give it a name of Firebase token in all caps and you'll wanna make sure to use that same name. Then we'll paste in the token and save it. GitHub will automatically encrypt this value for us and then we can access it securely from our CI server. In other words, it gives us a way to securely authenticate with Firebase from a GitHub Actions workflow. Now let's go ahead and create another YAML file in the workflows directory. This one we'll call deploy. Instead of running this workflow on a pull request, we'll run it on a push to the master branch. So this workflow will run if we push code directly to the master branch or if we merge a pull request into it. Now the job itself looks almost identical to the previous job. We check out the code, set up node, run our build command, but then we need to deploy it. And to do that, we're going to use a third party action called the Firebase action. This action takes care of all the steps required to set up the Firebase CLI on your server. It will run the Firebase command, and then we tell it to use the arguments of deploy only hosting. Then it's going to be looking for an environment variable of Firebase token. We can access our secret GitHub value by using dollar sign double braces followed by secrets dot Firebase token. And that's basically all there is to it. We can start using this continuous deployment workflow by pushing it to the master branch. Now if we go back to GitHub and merge that pull request from the previous example, you can see from the logging that it automatically builds and deploys our code to Firebase, and the changes should be automatically reflected on the website itself. And now that we have a basic CI CD pipeline, I wanna look at some other cool things you can do with GitHub Actions that you might not realize. Personally, I maintain a few open source projects that are available as libraries through NPM. One of those projects is SvelteFire, and anytime there's a major code change on the master branch, we cut a new release so developers can use that code in their projects. And every time that happens, I also need to go to the command line, log into NPM, and push that code to the NPM registry. It's kind of annoying and easy to forget, so let's just automate it with GitHub Actions. In this workflow, you'll notice I'm using the release event. That's because not every code change on the master branch requires a new release. For example, if you just fix a typo in the readme, it doesn't require a whole new release to be pushed out to NPM. In this recipe, you'll notice we have two jobs, one for build and one to publish to NPM. And we might want an additional job to publish to the GitHub package registry. By default, all the jobs will run concurrently in parallel. But that's not actually what we want here because we want to first build our code before releasing it to the package managers. We can use the needs keyword to tell GitHub Actions to run this job after the previous job is finished. This can be a really useful technique because in our case here, it allows us to build the code once and then push it out to two different registries without having to rebuild the code. So that's really useful if you're a library maintainer, but most companies use a lot of other communication tools beyond GitHub, like Slack, Discord, Jira, Trello, and so on. And in most cases, these tools maintain GitHub apps for you to integrate with their tools directly in GitHub. When you go to the GitHub marketplace, you'll notice that it's separated by apps and actions. 
Actions are reusable pieces of code you use in your own workflow, while apps are fully pre-built solutions that don't require you to deploy any code whatsoever. Because we use Slack for Fireship IO, I'm going to use that as an example. Let's imagine that I wanted to receive a Slack notification every time a new GitHub issue is posted. There are a variety of community-maintained actions that allow me to do this easily in a workflow. In this workflow, you can see I set up a trigger for GitHub issues, then use a Slack action along with some configuration variables to have it post messages directly in my Slack channel every time there's a new issue on GitHub. That's cool and all, but you can also solve this problem using a GitHub app, and it can be installed on your account by simply clicking a few buttons. The nice thing about a GitHub app is that it can be used across multiple repos simultaneously. So when you're automating with GitHub actions, it's a good idea to ask yourself if you want a fully installed app or if you want to build your own workflow with actions. I may do a whole separate video on apps because there's a lot of cool things you can do, like automatically analyze code quality, automatically update your dependencies, automatically optimize all your images, and automatically do a whole bunch of other cool stuff. But now let's shift gears into the final recipe, which is a GitHub action that runs on a specific schedule. This one happens to be a special treat for Firebase users because it solves a common problem. How do I export my Firestore data on a regular basis? Currently, the database doesn't provide automatic backups, so you need to manually export your data in order to re-import it in case of a disaster. In this recipe, we use the onSchedule event and pass it a cron schedule. If you don't understand how this cron syntax works, don't worry, not many people do, but there's an awesome app called CronTabGuru that can automatically generate schedules for you. The schedule in this example runs every night at midnight. And then in the action itself, we're using an action maintained by Google Cloud Platform. This action sets up the gcloud CLI in the environment. And then we can use it to run a couple commands to export our Firestore data into a storage bucket. And that process is now fully automated, so we should hopefully never have to worry about it again. And check the links in the description for a full write-up on how to set up the service account and everything else involved with gcloud. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Hopefully this video helped you get started with automation in your own project, and let me know what kind of things you're using GitHub Actions for in the comments. Stay tuned for the giveaway video in a few days. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.